Hey everybody, welcome to another session of Tony Talks right here on YouTube. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel at I am Tony215. Please do not forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and I am Tony215. <laughs> I know many people ask me, uh, um, am I from Philly? And I used to wonder, like, why do people always ask me, why am I from Philly? And, and then we realized the 215. And the answer to that question is, no, I'm not from Philly. The story behind my screen name, or I guess my stage name, or the name that people know me on social media, uh, I am Tony215, really comes from one of my exes. Um, we were in the car one day, and he suggested to me that I should get on Instagram. And at the time, I thought Instagram was completely stupid. Like, why would you post pictures and then comment on them? <laughs> but now I get it. Now I understand. And so he picked my screen name, um, Tony215. I added the I am to the Tony215. And I don't know. It just works. It works. I am Tony215. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> Today on Tony Talks, we are exploring why are there so many single gay black men? And actually, the question is, why are there so many single black men, period? Actually, <laughs> why are there so many single women? Why are there so many single people in the world? And that's what we're gonna explore today here on Tony Talks. <laughs> Black men are, are they're beautiful. I mean, black men are beautiful. Whether you are a man or a woman seeking another man, you have to admit, black men are beautiful. But the question is, like, why are there so many single black men? And I focus on my community. Of course, I'm in the gay community. I focus on my community a lot more. So the question is, why are there so many gay black men in the world you know like you would think that there would be more uh men in relationships whether you are a man dating a man or whether you're a man dating a woman so like what's the problem like why is it that in the in the black community we just can't seem to to get it together when it comes to relationships you know, as opposed to many other cultures, many other cultures, if you look, you know, at them in depth, they probably have more marriages and more uh, uncommitted relationships than in the African-American community. And it's a, it's a pressing issue. It's a pressing issue because I hear so many people say, I want to be in a relationship. I want to be... You know, I want to be somebody's bae. I want to be somebody's boo. I want a bae. I want a boo. So if you want to be in a relationship and you, you desire to be in a relationship, then like, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard to be in a relationship these days? That's the question. Is it because we don't know what we want? <laughs> is it because we're afraid of commitment? Now, a lot of women would probably say that. A lot of women would probably say that the average man is afraid of commitment. But is that the truth? Like, are we afraid of commitment? As men, whether you're gay, whether you're straight, are you afraid of commitment? Are you afraid of committing to just one person? And I get it. It's hard because, I mean, there's, there's so many beautiful, you know, uh, men out there in the world. You know, how do you choose, you know, just one? But you have to choose just one. You can't be with all of them. Well, you can try, but <laughs> it, you, it, it, it just won't end 
and a good result. That's just my opinion. You know, is it because we don't know how to love? Is it, does it really boil down to just, we have no idea about what love is and what it means to love one person, you know, forever? Is it because we don't understand monogamy? I mean, after all, we are brilliant men. We are very smart. We're, we're very intelligent. So we have to understand what monogamy is. But you know, the truth is monogamy is different for everyone. Monogamy for some people can involve three people. Monogamy in some cases can involve multiple people. So the question is like, what is, what's the issue? What is the issue? Why can't, why can't we get it together? True. There are probably many, many answers to this question. And well, in my opinion, the answers that obviously are not right because they haven't worked, they're not working. And is there really a true clear answer? I think it is. I think, you know, I guess first we have to define what a committed relationship is. And you know, if you really look up a committed relationship, it, it's probably gonna say, now traditionally a relationship or a committed relationship involves just two people, traditionally. There are cases where committed relationships can involve three people. I mean, they call it a polyamorous relationship. Could you find yourself in a polyamorous relationship? Could you find yourself in a relationship with two other people that, that makes it three of you. Some relationships involve multiple people. Um, I think they call that a polygamy. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Polygamy, where you have more than one partner. You probably have like four, maybe five. I don't know. Could you find yourself in a situation like that? The truth is committed relationships are going to vary from person to person and from situation to situation, circumstance to circumstance, because we all are different. We all are different. I look at things totally different. And well, <laughs> because it's my show, um, <laughs> it's my opinion and I'm going to share it. If you don't agree, then hey, it is what it is. <laughs> so here's what I think. I think the problem with committed relationships is one, there are so many people that are hurt. There are so many hurting people out there in the world. And when you really stop to think about it, like, if you're a person that's hurting, how can you, how can you be a good partner to somebody else? How can you truly, truly be free to love if you have baggage, if you have pain and hurt? in your heart stemming from usually in most cases is people's childhoods. People have experienced some type of trauma, molestation, rape, verbal abuse, mental abuse, bad environment. Maybe they grew up watching their mother get beat, you know, repeatedly by their father or by, you know, various different men. A lot of people have a lot of hurt stemming from somewhere in their life. And when they, you know, live their life out and they get older and they start to date and they start to uh, attempt to have relationships, uh, they just really just don't ever work out for them. Now that's not the case in everyone because, you know, there are some people that grew up and they were loved and they were hugged and they were kissed and, you know, they were encouraged and, you know, they were raised in beautiful environments. They were raised in households where they had a mother and a, and a father. So they didn't really experience any traumatic things in their life. And so well, there's no baggage to carry. And so as they get older, they um, want to have uh, favorable relationships that they, they want to have uh, relationships. And so, you know, you know, just like the hurt person, is out there looking for love. Well, the person that's not walking around with any baggage is out there looking for love too. And so, well, you know, sometimes these two individuals cross paths. 
sometimes they they actually meet and well you know a negative and a positive fortunately it doesn't equal a positive and that's that's scientifically that's mathematically and that's actually in the case of human beings you know we all have to go back and erase the hurt confront the hurt before we can move on to have favorable relationships positive relationships uh, enjoyable relationships with other people and i really think that that's one of the biggest issues is uh, as to why people can't have a uh, good healthy positive relationships is because a lot of people are walking around with hurt and they're mixing in with the people that don't have any hurt and well the people that are hurt they end up hurting the people that aren't hurt and so you're just walking around with a society of just hurt people <laughs> that's just not good that's not good for any relationship can it be cured yes it can hurt doesn't always have to be existent Pain doesn't always have to last a long time. The other problem I see is fear. You know, fear is, is, is something that can rob you of so many things. But I really think that fear is a, is, is a pressing issue in the matters of love. You know, people are so afraid of being hurt. People are so afraid of experiencing the hurt that they experienced the first time they're so afraid of experiencing it a second time that you know moving on past the fear of the hurt they can't and so when they meet someone that i mean doesn't have any hurt or has mount resolve in their life you know they miss they miss out they miss out on a good person because they're holding on to the fear of what happened in the past and you know Fear is just an illusion. It's just an illusion. And fear is just a, a, a preconceived idea of what you think is going to take place. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it has to take place. It doesn't even mean that it's going to take place. You know, so fear, like, what do you do with it? You get rid of it. And how do you get rid of it? You give everyone that comes into your life a clean slate. Everybody that comes into your life deserves a clean slate. Just like when you come into somebody's life, I mean, I, I would think that you would want the same offer to you, a clean slate. You know, why should someone pay for the sins of what somebody else did to you? Just move on, let go of the fear. Like, what do you have to fear? I mean, an adult. You are a grown individual. You don't have to remain in a situation that you don't want to be in. You can leave at any point in time without any reasoning, you know, without any explanation. So, you know, when you indulge in a person, when you start to involve yourself with a person, if you find that it's just not going to work for you, you can leave. So really there's really nothing to fear. Most people, um, what they fear, they actually end up uh, experiencing anyways. And uh, people that fear experiencing, I guess a repeat of what they experienced the first time, they usually end up experiencing it again. They usually end up doing a repeat anyways, you know, because of the fear. Fear can drive you to do a lot of things that uh, you probably wouldn't do if you didn't have the fear. And I think ultimately, just bad examples. Like, you know, especially in the gay community. Like, what good examples do you really have out there where you have two people that have a favorable relationship where they can tell you the secrets to, su to success of having a successful, long lasting relationship. There are very few, there are very few amongst the many of us that are out there. And that's why I really consider it a pandemic. It's a, it's a pandemic, it's a pandemic, it's an epidemic. It's, it's not a good 
It's not a good situation. But the bad examples, like, well, you know, the bad examples can stem from your mother, your father. Maybe they were dysfunctional. You no, know, like, where do the, the bad examples come from? You know, if you ask me, personally, I think all the examples of bad relationships come from media. I mean, you gotta think about it. As, as people, as individuals, we do consume a lot of, of television. We do consume a lot of uh, published articles, magazines, you know, people's opinions. Is it all healthy? You know, is it all right? Is it all correct? Is, it, is some of that stuff even true? There's so many opinions about so many things when it comes to relationships and there's so many outlets to choose from. But, you know, media, I think, is the, the, the prime suspect. It's the prime suspect, and I think it's the biggest issue. Because, you know, when you watch Atlanta Housewives and you look at their relationships, they're all dysfunctional. You know, even down to the music that we listen to, if you listen to the lyrics of most of the music that we listen to, it's all sadness and turmoil and you cheated on me, I cheated on you, there's so much hurt, there's so much pain. And I think that's the problem, you know, that we've sensationalized the pain, the hurt that can potentially come from uh, love, that can potentially come from bad relationships. Uh, We've celebrated it, we've enhanced it, we've uh, glamorized it so much that, you know, we've been conditioned to uh, expect these things to happen, and which causes back to the fear, you know? And of course, you know, it causes hurt. So like, what is a good example? You find yourself fighting with someone all the time. If you find yourself you know, in violence with someone all the time. If you find yourself, you know, in more conflict than you do in more enjoyable moments with a person, you know, that would probably say that um, you guys don't need to be together. You guys are not gonna last very, very long. And in situations like that, you know, you have to really identify it and identify it quick because yeah, the longer you stay in it, the deeper the feelings are gonna get. And of course, it's gonna cause pain. And of course, you're gonna be afraid. It's gonna create fear of you going into the next situation when the next person presents themselves to you. Well, it's doomed from the beginning. Another problem is society has conditioned us to believe that everybody is meant to be in a relationship and that's just not true. You know, I look at things from a totally different perspective. I look at things from nature and it's not in every person's nature to be in a monogamous relationship. It's not in everybody's makeup to be in a, a committed relationship. It just isn't. And it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with that person. It doesn't mean that, you know, that person's on the wrong side of, of right. It just means that it's just not in their nature. And I think that if most people or more people explore, you know, these aspects of themselves and identify that, hey, you know what? I, I'm, not a, I'm not a relationship type of person. And, and, and go forth with that and embrace that, that, you know, they won't cause hurt to other people that may encounter them because, you know, they'll be upfront about where they are in life and what their expectations are. And it won't cause fear. You know, that person won't be so hurt that they won't, that they will be, be afraid to seek out another relationship with another person that actually wants to be in a relationship that actually, you know, monogamy, actually happens to be a part of their nature. And if you want to know if monogamy is a part of your nature, well, if you're a water nature, if you are a earth nature, monogamy is more likely, is most likely, is a greater chance that you will understand and desire uh, monogamy more than a person that is a fire nature 
or in air nature. And not saying that air natures and fire natures can't be in monogamous relationships, but you know, their idea of monogamy, well, it's not gonna look, it's not gonna look anything like the idea of the monogamy be um, between the earth and the water. I teach constellation mapping, as you guys know, and um, I will be doing uh, uh, constellation mapping sessions or seminars, or if you wanna call it, on the Zoom uh, platform very, very soon. I will be announcing that very, very soon. But uh, I will be explaining, you know, uh, how that how that works. Constellation mapping. Constellation mapping is basically joining two people together based on the nature, their natures, not necessarily their looks, their status, and not necessarily feelings, because the feelings will will follow if the natures are matching. So this is what I teach. I do private sessions as well. But anyways. Uh, hit me up on um, Instagram or Facebook. DM me. I am Tony215, and I can give you more details on um, what's gonna come, you know, in on the Zoom platform. And if you want a personal session, well, you know, you can hit me up, and I do those too. But it's a tool. It's a tool, and it really, really works. But anyways, <laughs> I had to throw it in there. Like we we watch a lot of celebrity news. We watch we watch a lot of celebrities, and we. You know, we watch them in in their relationships, and you know, to be honest with you, uh, celebrities are the worst people to uh, seek advice from uh, when it comes to relationships. Horrible examples. Now, I want people to think about this: the institution of love, love. It is a business. You know, there are people out there in the business world that are making and that have made billions, trillions of dollars off the ideology of love, off of people trying to find love, trying to be in relationships. How is that a business, Tony? What is a business? I mean, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is a perfect example. You know, it's a perfect example. but. Why is it one day that I'm gonna buy all these gifts for you? You know, why is it just one day, you know, I'm gonna go out of my way to make you happy? Why shouldn't that be every day? <laughs> you know, that that just doesn't that doesn't make sense to me, you know, like okay, so three hundred and sixty-four days out of the year, um it's just gonna be like whatever you're here. But one day out of the year, Valentine's Day, you know, I'm gonna go out of my way to shower you with gifts. I'm gonna tell you how much I love you. I'm gonna do all these great things. We'll take out a dinner. What? Shouldn't that be every day? <laughs> you know, even down to the music, you know, that we listen to, even the things that we watch on TV. Have you ever noticed that all the music, all the R&B music is all about pain? It's all about, you know, you cheated on me, I cheated on you you know, pain and hurt. And it's, it, you, they make money, they make billions and trillions of dollars off of people's pain and hurt and love. It's, it's a billion trillion dollar industry. And you don't get to be a billion trillion dollar industry by giving you the truth. I tell people all the time, you know, in fitness, it's a billion trillion dollar industry. Do you think that they're gonna tell you the truth. If I give you the truth, you won't need me anymore. If I give you the truth, you won't ever have to buy another magazine ever again because I give you the truth. You know, people have to realize the truth is one way. It's one direction. Even though there are many ways to get to the truth, still one truth, it's still one direction. These institutions, they make billions and trillions of dollars by keeping us confused you know as long as i can keep you confused you'll keep coming back seeking the truth they make money off of people's sadness they make money off of people's sorrow they make money off of keeping people confused you know, um relationships are not that difficult they're not that hard uh finding someone yes it it it, it takes time once you find that person, it's not that hard, it's not that difficult. And no, we shouldn't 
be conditioned to expect pain. We shouldn't be conditioned to expect this person to cheat on us. We shouldn't be conditioned to expect anything but happiness, gladness, love, affection, generosity, you know, all of those warm and fuzzy things. <laughs> so at the end of the day, people need to understand that, you know, in life, you're gonna get hurt. I mean, you, you ride a bike, you're gonna fall off in the beginning and you're gonna skin your knee and you're gonna get hurt. You know, uh, if you jump off a, a mountain, <laughs> and chances are you might get hurt. <laughs> you know, uh, that's life, it's life. People first have to go back and erase their own trauma. They have to go back and uh, confront the uh, pressing issues of their life before they can positively move on, before they can actually be a good partner to someone else. And then the second thing is uh, you have to just give people a clean slate. You have to let go of the fear and you have to give every new person that comes into your life a clean slate. And what they put on that slate, what they write on that slate is up to them. And depending on what they put on that clean slate that you've given them will determine the outcome of whether they stay in your life or not, whether you um, will be a partner to them or not. In conclusion, change your sources. You know, change your sources. And learn from the people that um, actually mm, have favorable relationships. Talk to the people that uh, are in love and not the people that, you know, spent 20 years fighting and then, you know, within the past five years now, you know, they're coexistent. No, not those people. I'm talking about the people that have had that chemistry, that energy, that, that love from the beginning. Talk to those people. Those people are doing something right. Well, if you follow what I teach, uh, I think your chances of experiencing that is greater. Because at, at the end of the day, I mean, uh, nothing you've done has worked. You know, you're still single. And the only reason why I'm single is because, well, I'm looking for that Pacific make and model. This has been another session of Tony Talks. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel at I am Tony215. And please don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at I am Tony215. You know, I may not have covered everything and I apologize, but you know, these are just uh, some of the ma major things that I think that we should focus on, that we can focus on to get more people in relationships, you know, because after all, you know, like that's what life is about. Life is about sharing your life with others. I mean, what's the point in reaching the pinnacle of success? What is the point in obtaining all this wealth if you can't share it with somebody? Just saying. <laughs> Until then, people, I love you. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, peace. <laughs>